Welcome and Happy New Year on behalf of St. Luke's United Methodist Church. We hope that the hope of Christmas you will carry into 2021. And we are excited to be with you and starting a new sermon series called Contagious Faith. So as we join in worship this morning, may our hearts be open to what God has in store for us.
As we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, we hope that you will reach out if you have a prayer concern because we want to pray for you. And if you do have a prayer concern, just put it in the comment section. Let us know or fill out our online prayer request form. We have so many and we hope that this new year that we will lean into pray, prayer and pray without ceasing. Let us go to the Lord now in prayer. gracious God, as we celebrate this Christmas season, we are excited with joy of this new gift that has been brought to us, that we are excited to share it with others, that we're excited to live out this gift in our world. But Lord, this pandemic and all the things around it have caused us not to be able to do it in the same way that we would like. So God, we pray this day that the joy of your message not be lost in the logistics of how we deliver it, but let our eyes be open to new ways to sharing your word, to sharing and proclaiming the joy that Christmas brings and that Easter promises. Let us look to opportunities to be in fellowship one another with one another whether it be virtually or whether it's through a window or a door. Help us, oh God, to be the hands and feet showing love, not just to the believers, but those that may not know you. Those that um, are on the margins that are really wondering about what is or who is this God that everyone is talking about. Help us to take the gift of this beautiful, reconciling message of Jesus' birth into places by our hum with humility and kindness. Help us to live that out in ways that is received by a touch, received by the kindness that only you can give. Help us, oh God, to be a beacon and an icon of faith. An icon, meaning the image of God in the Greek language. And so, oh God, we pray for those in places that may not know you, that places that yet wonder about this gift. Be with them, oh God. Open their hearts and minds. And help us all to be contagious with our faith bold in our words and bold in our love that we go tell it everywhere and lord we pray this in the name of the father son and the holy spirit using the prayer that you taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning and happy new year to everyone. We pray 2021 is going to be a, a wonderful year for us. You know, this Sunday in the Christian year has a name. Uh, the name of this Sunday is Epiphany. So what is Epiphany? E epiphany means an unveiling, uh, a disclosure, a revealing. And in the history of the church, um, Epiphany has been used to refer to those occasions uh, where the incarnate Lord Jesus Christ has been revealed to people and groups, uh, groups such as the Magi, the wise men, to whom we now turn in Matthew chapter two, beginning at verse one. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east 
and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. And then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. Well, after they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So why did the Magi, the wise men, travel so far to visit Jesus? Well, in verse 2 of our text, we're told why. They said, we saw his star in the east and we've come to worship him. You know, during 2021, I counted, we're going to have 52 Sunday morning opportunities to come and worship Him, whether it be in person or online. And we also have a number of other occasions when we can come and worship Him. But the question to ask ourselves is this, each time when we do come and worship Him, wherever that may be, will we, like the Magi, as we're told in verse 12, find ourselves returning home by another route. Well, what does returning home by another route even mean? Hold on to that question for a moment. You know, what a difference, what a difference worshiping Jesus, the newborn king, who is somewhere between a toddler and a, uh, a two-year-old at this time. And they were living in a house at this time as well. But what a difference worshiping Jesus made in the life of the Magi. Briefly, let's ask the question, can one birth be that significant? Let's just take a thin, thin slice of history, secular history, and just see how significant one life, one birth can be. Let's... Take the early 19th century, for instance. Very shaky times in world history. Your people everywhere during those days were sitting on the edge of their seats. Uh, they were watching with bated breath the campaigns of Napoleon. Everywhere there seemed to be talk of invasions and battles and bloodshed as the French dictator pushed his way through Europe. Of course, babies were born at that time. But who really had time to think about babies with Napoleon on the move? Well, someone should have, because if we just consider one year during that period of the early 19th century, the year 1809 was a year of incredibly significant births. There was Alfred Tennyson, there was Oliver Wendell Holmes, there was Edgar Allan Poe. There was Charles Darwin, whose theories, as we know, uh, have caused many to turn away from faith in God. There were also the cries of a baby in a rugged log home in Kentucky. That baby's name, we know, Abraham Lincoln. So the year 1809 was a year of incredibly significant births. And yet, despite the birth of these influential people. Get the headlines that dominated 
the media, the newspapers in that year. The destiny of the world is being shaped on an Austrian battlefield. You know, in reality today, only a handful of history buffs can even name one of Napoleon's military campaigns. In reality, the world history was being shaped in the cradles of England and America at that time, but infinitely higher in impact than these significant births is the birth of Jesus Christ. And that sounds like a pretty relevant topic at the beginning of a new year, doesn't it? So with all the news and with all the information that's, that's constantly bombarding us from so many sources nowadays, many people focus on what we might call the Napoleons of our day, the people making the headlines today, the situations making the headlines today. But in the long term of history, there'll be nothing more than a flash in the pan. And focusing so much on the headlines of today gives the risk that we might miss the significance of the birth of Christ. The, the birth of all births. The birth of the one who can and does continue to change people's lives for the better. So back to our Matthew text. Think about it. When our Matthew text is discussed, isn't the usual focus on the journey of the Magi to worship Jesus? And we like to talk about um, the Magi following the star to worship Jesus. Uh, we like to talk about the gifts that the Magi brought to worship Jesus. Nothing at all wrong with this. That is important. The first part of their journey to worship Jesus. Very important. But doesn't an exclusive focus on their journey to worship Jesus uh, not miss much of the significance of their overall journey? So today let's focus on their journey from worshiping Jesus. Our final words in today's text, verse 12, they returned to their country by another route. And while this is literally true, they did take different roads to get back home because they didn't want Herod to know about Jesus' location. But there's a far deeper meaning here for them and for us. And that deeper meaning is this. After encountering Jesus, these men would never be the same again, ever. So what had happened? They had worshiped the creator of this universe, almighty God in human flesh. And afterwards, a new course in life was unavoidable. Uh, a new route, a different route in life was inevitable. So let's, let's just take a few moments and just consider a handful of people who returned home, quote, by another route after encountering Jesus, the life changer. Of course, as we looked at a couple of weeks ago, there's Luke chapter 2 where we find Simeon who had waited his entire long life into old age to experience this prophecy of Isaiah, arise and shine for your light has come. After encountering that baby, remember from a couple of weeks ago, Simeon saw that the light had come and he declared with great relief, sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you've promised. I have seen your salvation. Simeon returned home by another route. And then from Luke 19, there's Zacchaeus, that wealthy tax collector who had up to this point been greedily taking from others. But after spending time with Jesus, he began 
graciously giving to others rather than greedily taking from others. And this prompted Jesus to declare salvation has come to this home today. See, Zacchaeus changed course in life and he went home by another route. And then there's the gospel writer John. One day Jesus sends John ahead uh, into Samaria and John is not welcome there. And so with a, with a vindictive spirit, with a vengeful spirit, John asks Jesus, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven and destroy them? But after spending more time with Jesus, John writes in his first New Testament letter to the early Christians these words. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. We love because He first loved us. The course of John's life changed and he exchanged a vengeful spirit for a loving spirit. John went home by another route. And then from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, there's that Gentile woman at the well. And she had gone through five husbands. And the man she was living with at the time was not her husband. But one day she encountered Jesus. And she went back to her people with a great testimony about Jesus. And the scripture tells us, so the people came streaming from the village to see him. Many were brought to faith in Jesus because of her witness. You see, she also went home after encountering Jesus by another route. I remember someone who struggled with alcohol for many years and he encountered Jesus one day and he named his real estate business Rebos, R-E-B-O-S, that's sober spelled backwards. After encountering Jesus, he went home by another route. You know, e each year coming to the manger is so exciting. We look forward to it uh, with great anticipation. And it's so very important to go to the manger each year. But if you think about it, it's really how we leave our worship of Jesus that counts. That, that we return home changed in some way. Right? One minister's first appointment was to five small rural churches in Tennessee. And each of those churches had a lay leader, a highly respected member of the church who is a very mature Christian and capable of, of leading the congregation, uh, highly respected by everyone. And so outside one of those churches was a well. And beside that church was a four-room schoolhouse. Between the schoolhouse and the church was a well. Uh, one of the wells you had to pump water to get it to come up. And there was a tin cup tied to the well. And so the children from the school and the people from the church would both come out to the well and pump the water. And they would drink out of that tin cup, drink out of the same cup. Well, one summer, there was an epidemic. Uh, nasty, nasty virus going around that little community. And the, the county came and they asked the minister, would you announce in church for people not to use the cup there at the well because one person is catching what the other had and the virus is spreading through drinking out of that same cup at the well. Well, immediately after that announcement was made, the lay leader in the church stood and came forward. It was Communion Sunday, and he uncovered the bread and the juice, and he slid the bread to the side, and he held up the cup, 
And he said, may all of us who drink after Jesus catch what he had. On this Epiphany Sunday, as we share Holy Communion, as we drink after Jesus, May we all catch what He had and then go home by a different route. Amen. At this point in our worship service, let's prepare our hearts to share in Holy Communion as we remember that Jesus was born in order to someday give his life for us on the cross so that we might have forgiveness and eternal life. 
So let's go to the Lord in a time of personal confession. Let us pray. In these moments, Father God, may your Holy Spirit lead us to confess whatever it may be in our lives that might be uh, creating uh, any kind of separation between us. Help us to confess whatever it may be and to clear the record as we receive the forgiveness that Christ offers us. Let us now confess our sins. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And you've made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We remember on that night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, that he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, and then he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, our Lord Jesus took the cup he gave thanks to you, and then he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you will in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we now proclaim the mystery and the wonder of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Now, Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on each of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we in turn may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And through your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray in your holy church, all honor and all glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And at this time, we invite you, if you would, to take uh, your bread and your juice and break that bread, and we'll share that together. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for us, remind us that he gave his body for us that we might have forgiveness of sins. Let's eat our bread at this time. Now we'll take back the second layer of the juice. And let's remember, this reminds us of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was voluntarily shed for each of us. Let's now share the juice together. Let us pray. 
gracious God, you have so lovingly given your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for our behalf. We thank you so much that we have forgiveness of sin, that we have a second and a third and a fourth chance in life, and that his grace is sufficient for all that we face in life. Let's go forth with joy and peace and hope in our hearts. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Once again, a uh, happy and a blessed new year to everyone. And as we come to worship throughout the year, um, let's come with the expectation of encountering Jesus and in some way being changed by Jesus so that we can leave and go home by another route, growing and maturing in our faith throughout the year. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the unbreakable companionship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and always. Amen. <laughs>